Hey traders, Jason here with Day Train Fearless. In this video, I'm going to talk about the trading psychology and using or trading the S&P E-mini 500 futures. But before we begin, do me a favor and actually hit the like button and subscribe and also comment down below and let me know what struggles you have on the trading psychology side and I'll try and make a future video um, of ways to help you uh, to achieve that. So let's jump right into this video. So trading psychology and trading the EME and the S&P futures. Um, as I've been uh, day trading the S&P 500 futures for over the last 16 years, I've had my ups and downs, right? I've had my struggles. I've uh, learned over the years how, how much risk management of the uh, futures are, right? Uh, how to protect my trading capital, how not to do revenge trading, all these little aspects because you're trading a very highly leveraged product, right? Um, for years, all I was able to trade were the S&P 500s, um, but now, and they actually have the micros, right? Which is only $5 a point versus the S&P 500, which is $50 a point. That gives you more leeway um, as a maybe new trader uh, that you are, if you're watching this, it, it gives you an access to a market to where you can make these live trades, but not have so much risk on the table. Um, you also are able to manage risk and not have have to have a really large account. Um, you can hold trades overnight and really not worry too much um, about getting blown up with your account uh, with the micros. But one of the things that I've learned is always, always manage your risk. If you can manage your risk, then it doesn't matter if you're trading the big contract or the small, you know how much you're risking on every single trade. That is probably one of the most uh, important things when you learn to trade the S&P 500 um, futures, if it's micros or the big contract. Also, you could trade options on the e-mini futures, even the micros. Um, I, I personally like selling puts um, on the micro futures because I could keep adding to those puts. I'm really not too worried um, about getting big because I understand 10 of those contracts would equal one large ES future, right? So as prices may be going against me, I could add another one and really know and manage my risk very well. If you want to help sponsor my channel and get some education uh, at the same time, make sure you check out my coaching and mentoring service. I've been day trading the S&P E-mini futures, stocks and options for the past 21 years. You can learn any of my trading strategies uh, if you want to learn how to st uh, trade stocks or options or just trading psychology. I charge 40 bucks an hour or I have a special three hours for only a hundred bucks. So make sure you check out my website, daytrainfearless.com for more information or send me an email, jason at daytrainfearless.com. But let's get right back to the show. A couple other things that I've really found throughout the years that I love um, with the email futures is they trade so technical. There's so much liquidity in these that they trade very well off the Fibonacci uh, retracements. They uh, trade extremely great on trend lines, uh, divergent uh, trade setups, overbought, oversold conditions. Uh, so there's a lot of things that are really positive about trading the S&P 500 uh, futures. The other thing is when you're trading, okay, don't think about the money. Don't sit there and go, okay, I'm gonna make a hundred bucks on this trade and focus on the money. Focus more on the trade itself. Um, when you're able to really become self-aware and trade based off of the trade itself, the money will come. If you're too focused on the money 
aspect of every single trade, okay, how much you're going to make or lose, then that's what you're going to ha have problems with because you're not actually watching the entire picture of the charts and everything that goes along with it all you're really focusing is on the money side of it it's kind of like buying a house there are people that buy a house and they go well if the house is a good deal but my mortgage is going to be x amount of dollars and if something breaks okay all these problems but you're missing the bigger picture if you buy that house in 10 years whatever money you spend today more than likely will be made up tenfold in 10 years from now right let's say you buy a house for 200 grand 10 years later that house might be worth 300 grand but you're nickeling and diming because you're too focused on the money of that instant and how quick like oh that new fridge might cost me fifteen hundred dollars maybe i won't buy the house because i know i'm gonna have to fix the fridge or this but guess what in 10 years that house might be worth a hundred grand right so that fifteen hundred dollars is really not that much of a hindrance um, on the bigger picture same thing with the s p futures right when you sit there and you trade um based on the charts and the setup okay then you will start to see more success in your own trading so hopefully this uh, video helps you guys um a couple other things that I will say is I personally don't like the NASDAQ or the Dow. There's not enough liquidity in those futures. So if you're trying to figure out which future to trade, I would stick with the S&P 500. If you're brand new to this and you're trying to figure out um, how the how to trade futures, I would say paper trade. I'm not a huge opponent of paper trading for long amounts of time, but paper trade while you're trying to learn, don't lose real money, right? And then once you figure out a potential system or something like that of how they work, how to um, how to trade a specific setup, we'll say it's the divergence or something like that, then you're able to go from paper to the micros and when you trade the micros trade one micro do that until you're successful for maybe a couple months this is a journey when this is not a sprint right we want to be able to keep trading five years ten years down the line don't worry about the money today it will come as you start to learn all this but as you kind of go maybe three months of being profitable on one contract then go to two contracts and so on um, and then you're you'll be able to scale up because in futures if you understand leverage and the scaling part that's all it is you look for one trade setup you just add contracts to that but with that being said i hope this uh, video helps and as always thank you for uh, watching my videos and until next time we'll talk to you soon